Hi, Colonel Tex here again with the next part in a series of videos about building Linux from scratch 9.1. So in the last video we got the um, X windowing system work working, basic X windowing system. So that achieves one of our two goals to um, complete initially. Uh, the other is what I'm going to cover in this video, which is to get a graphical browser working um, that we can use within the GUI. Now, the um, all the modern browsers seem to want tons of libraries, um, either they're heavyweight libraries like uh, Qt and GTK and, some, and so on, or they need multiple support or a combination of both. From uh, loads of other packages and and these uh, big libraries, um, and it's been quite hard to decide which browser um, that's in the BLFS book to to build. Um, so I've I've looked at them carefully. I think I've come up with one that shouldn't be too, or shouldn't take too much um, in the way of dependencies to get going. Um, although, like I say, they all have lots of dependencies either recommended or um, optional. Um, looking at what's available and what we've installed so far, I've, I've come to the conclusion that one of them will be ideal for us that we can get going relatively, quick, relatively quickly. Well, I'll say relatively quickly, rather I should say relatively easily um, without having to install very many packages. Um, there are still a couple of big packages we need to install um, Qt and Qt Web Engine. They take approximately an hour each. I think one's probably about an hour, and another one's probably just over an hour. Um, but I think we should be able to get away with getting that installed and using that as a basis to carry on uh, purely on the build machine that I'm demonstrating this these videos on. Um, so once we're in that position, then we can probably be the best time to go and revisit some of the packages we've got to rebuild, um, just to enable any functionality that's missing at the moment in packages we've installed, and then carry on building other applications and all, all their dependencies. So what I'm going to do to start off with is start up the graphical environment, and as you can see, this is what we were left with in the previous video. Now um, we've got a few issues we need to uh, sort out first of all. First thing is that the main login window it stretches way off the screen too much. The, if I fill the screen up um, you'll see that there's no cursor on that prompt because the cursor is on the line below the screen. In fact, if I do ls, uh, say forward slash, you can see that's only produced partial output because the rest is missing off the screen. So we've got this issue that this window is not correctly sized for the monitor. And likewise, you could argue that these screens by default are partially hidden. And we can change all that, we'll change some default settings. Um, another thing I need to maybe show you if you've never used TWM before because it is quite basic um, it's a way of getting there is a menu uh, menu in the system although it's sort of hidden away a little bit the first one that um, should be mentioned straight away is the background you notice when the cursor goes on the background it comes with a big X, big X and it's kind of suggesting you can't do anything well in fact you can if you left click and hold the button down you get these options here to deal with the actual management of the windows and you'll see there there's an option for X terms so this is the only program that you can start off I'm not sure how that appears there if that's built in or if it just knows what's available or that's something that gets compiled in or if it's a config I don't know but it's sufficient to be getting on with and you can just um, let go of the mouse button when you when you have highlighted the option you want so I've still got my butt, the finger down on the button. I'll let go of it there, and you see you get this like cage up. It's like a frame, which shows the default size of the window that's going to be created, and it allows you to place anywhere on screen where you want the window to first appear. 
And all you do then is just click your left button and the window appears. And as I showed you, I think I showed you in the last video, to resize, you just click and hold this icon in the corner. You'll get this uh, like compass head icon, uh, yeah, cursor icon with the four arrows. And as soon as you hit one of the sides, top, bottom, left, right, you can start resizing the window in whichever dimension. You see if I go past the limit, then the dimensioning happens in a different um, a different direction. And then just let go of the mouse when you've resized it as you, as you see fit. Also just remember that the focus is controlled by where the mouse is, not, not by clicking on the window. So if I click on this window, um, it doesn't do anything basically, it's the focus. So now I've put the focus on the window behind, if I type, the uh, typing goes into the window behind, even though it's, it is behind this one that's sitting on top of it. So that's something to bear in mind. If, you th if you're looking at this window and you're thinking you're typing and nothing's appearing, it's because your mouse is somewhere else and that's where the input is going to. So that's something to bear in mind. You can iconify these windows just by clicking this little dot. It just goes into a little icon and you click it again to bring it back. And you can just click the title bar to bring each window to the front if it's covered and you want to see all of the window. So that's basically how it works. To get rid of the X term, it's just like a normal shell. You can type exit or you can type um, control D in any of these. So if I put another one there, control D. You see with control D you get the message that we configured, warning about leaving the shell and it closes. Like I say, you can just open another one. And also remember what I said about this login screen. It's been given a different name, login. That's because when you exit that screen, the whole session goes. So if I've got, for example, um, a session running here, and I go to this screen and I do Control D once and Control D twice, you see it's just everything gets killed straight away. It doesn't matter if something's running, it will just get killed. So you've really got to be careful um, what you do in this in this um, login X term. Um, so it's, it's a, that's one reason why I've got that control D is to, just to prevent mistakes like that. And it's it's also good to run something in that screen, you know, maybe top or something that you can't just do control D by accident. Um, something that, that does actually stop you from quitting immediately like that. So I'll be running the browser in that when we actually get, uh, get to start um, compiling the packages text browser. So the next thing I want to show you about TWM is more menus. So the, I'll show you the sort of basic menu for the desktop and you can you see you can also um, quit from there and restart. I don't think I've ever used that restart um, but it's got an option there anyway. You've also got three different menus on each of these X term windows. So if you left click and hold sorry, if you hold the control button down and left click and hold the button, you get a main menu coming up with a few options. Um, while holding the control button and middle clicking and holding the middle button down on the mouse, you get another menu which is through the virtual, uh, the video, termulate, uh, video terminal emulation, some options there. And lastly, if you hold control down and click the right button, you get another menu up, third menu with stuff to do with the fonts. So there's a couple of useful things here. Um, the first one, if I right click, is we can change the size of the font. So you can see that window's got bigger and so is the fonts. Likewise, I could do it in this screen here and you can see the fonts got a lot bigger. And of course the window's got even bigger and gone off the screen even more. So. If I set this to a smaller font, you can see there's the full screen, but now obviously the smaller font is quite a lot harder to read. Um, another thing you can do, which is quite useful, if you find the white is too bright for your eyes, um, I certainly find it a bit annoying to stare at white screens a lot. 
if you centre click there's an option called enable reverse video and if you click that it, it makes the background black so things are what I find a lot easier to read so that's quite handy um, now there are some um, options you can set some defaults you can set for TWM and for Xterm and the default options for TWM well in fact is to do with the windowing more than anything is uh, there's this file you can edit called XinitRC now each user can have a copy of XinitRC called .XinitRC in the home directory and I think at the moment I'll probably find there's not one here because I've not created it I don't think it creates one by default so I've list all the files yeah there's nothing there .XinitRC X, dot x in it rc but we can modify the system wide one um, as a root so I'll do via etc and it's in capital x 11 forward slash app defaults and then the name of the file x in it rc and if you go to the bottom here these last few lines here these last five lines are the things that start off the initial programs for x xorg um, off the top of my head i think if you don't have any of the, anything in here you'll just start x and you'll end up with a blank screen because it's not been told that there's anything uh, to run and display on the screen so these commands here what it does initially it, it runs twm the the tab window manager and it puts that into the background that's so that it could then run X clock. So we've got the X clock in the top right hand corner, as you've seen, and that's put into the background with this ampersand. And then we've got two of the X term windows, which also put into the background. And then the main uh, program, which runs and controls the X windowing system, is this one that's executed with, with exec. So you put in exec and then the, the program you want to run, which again is another X term, as you know. And you can see it's been given the name login. So that's the name you see on the title bar of that window to remind you that's the one that will bring the X, X, or the X window system to a halt. And then these numbers are just about the geometry of how the windows appear on the screen and what size they are. So you can see the X clock's only a tiny little window, 50 by 50. And we've got an X term that's 80 characters by 50 characters. I think this one for the X clocks in pixels and the one for X terms in, in characters. Um, we've got one there, 80 by 20, so that'd be the smaller one. This X terms one that's in the middle towards the top. This one's in the middle towards the bottom, the smaller one. And then we've got the larger one, which is the login one on the left, which is 66 lines. So in theory, if we um, deleted this and put in, say, 45, that'll make a shorter screen a uh, shorter X term window and because this is just a script file you can do things like for example um, put a hash in front of that to tell um, start X to ignore or sorry not tell start X to tell the X windowing system to ignore that line so it's just just remarked out and that's why it's gone that different color so now if we change this and rerun start X you'll see that the left hand X term is shorter because we told it to use fewer lines, it's 45 lines now instead of 66 and you'll notice the X clock's not appearing anymore um, of course you know maybe we'd say I want the X clock so you can type X clock in here and there it goes, it comes up with default size because we didn't specify any geometry at all left click and there it is and just like anything else you can resize it how you want because it's just an ordinary graphical window um, and of course if we wanted that running in the background if I do control C that will stop it you can just put an ampersand behind it and it just you get the prompt back and it will just start running in the background and that's it I don't know if this takes any options at all no it doesn't seem to respond to anything no clicking so there may not even be a way of quitting this, I don't know. Um, now the reverse video, that's actually something else you can set. So because that's specific to X term, 
Um, there's also an Xterm configuration file. And that one's quite simply in the home directory. It's not even a hidden file. It's just called capital X, capital T, ERM. And you can put loads of options in here to control Xterm. Um, those options we saw in the menus, you can, um, they've actually got names, a lot of them, and you can put um, those names in here with, with parameters after them. So, for example, to turn on the reverse video for all of the X terms by default, uh, all of these parameters, as far as I know, start off with X term star and then the parameter itself. So, in this case, it's reverse video, then a colon and a space, and then you put in this case a flag so I could put false or true so I want reverse video so obviously I'll put in true and that will be this this file gets read by X term every time it's started so that means that every X term that appears in uh, the screen now will have the reverse video set and as you can see they're they're all black now by default because that is the default we just set so uh, that's all I've got really to say to TWM and X term is quite let's say quite basic. It looks basic, but it's more than adequate to get get us going, which is the main thing. So what I'm going to do now is just uh, try and resize these windows to get things um, into a position where we can carry on, and I can also obviously demonstrate what I'm doing. Uh, I don't know if you saw when I was resizing it, it shows you the dimensions in the top left hand corner. If I get the other mouse, just there in the top left hand corner, it's got the dimensions which changes. Ideally, you want to try and keep to at least 80 characters wide or more. Some programs don't like small terminals, and one in particular is the kernel configuration. If you have it too small, it will complain that the console is not big enough. So I'm just going to set this to a small screen at the moment because the next thing I'm going to do is to set, if I use the right mouse, is to set a bigger font with the right, I think huge is going to be too big probably, well maybe not. No, that's probably alright actually. And I'll just extend this downwards, oops. It's off the screen now slightly. Just going to extend this down to fill the whole screen. So I've got 40 lines there, that's not too bad. Just make sure that's all on the screen, this window. So nothing missing. Uh, this second one I'm going to use as a my input screen so and this one here I'm just going to leave in the background in case I need it I don't think I will need it but I'll leave it there just in case now this one let's see if I make this huge this is going to go off the screen unfortunately so let's see if I can make it no that's a bit too small make it large Yeah, but it overlaps this other one. Let me make this one large. Yeah, that's not too bad. It's only a little bit of overlap. And then I'll make this one a little bit bigger. So, like I say, this is login one, so I want to try and make sure that I don't come out of the session and abandon everything we're doing. I could be in the middle of a compile, and if I exited it on this window, then that compile would just be abandoned midway which is not what I want. So what I'm going to do is get the web browser up in this one. And then it makes it more difficult for this window to uh, be quit from and therefore lose everything. So this one here, I just need to reduce the size of it a little bit. Uh, I'll put it there, put it there I think, yeah, and then I can see the, 
little one at the top if I need to. And then I've still got my web browser overlay on this screen just to refer to as it's easier. Um, in fact, I could make this shorter just so I can see what I'm typing in the bottom one. Yeah, let's see. Yeah, maybe for now, I'll make this a little bit shorter down here and then have the browser. Yeah, that's probably better. Maybe something like that, about half and half. Oops. I'll say that third X term. I don't think I'll need it, but it's hovering there in the background if I do need to use it. 